Hey guys, how's it going? Um, so I'm here for ShakeTube, and at long last, uh, we have come to the play that many of us have been waiting for, which is a uh, Hamlet. Uh, so Hamlet doesn't need too much of an introduction, but um, it is about Hamlet, who is the Prince of Denmark. At the beginning of the play, his father has just died two months prior to the beginning of the play, and his father's brother, his uncle Claudius, has married his Hamlet's mother, Gertrude, and taken over as king. And at the beginning of the play, we find Hamlet pretty distraught over, over a mixture of his father's death and his mother's marriage to his father's brother, which he finds kind of creepy and, uh, and incestuous. Um, by the standards of the time, at least, that would be considered incestuous. Um, and, uh, but then, uh, Hamlet is approached by the ghost of his father, Hamlet Sr., and this ghost tells him that uh, he didn't die, he didn't just die of natural causes or something, he was actually poisoned by Claudius. Um, and so the ghost of Hamlet Sr. Uh, implores Hamlet to uh, gain revenge. And so famously the rest of the play is Hamlet not quite being able to do what the ghost has asked him to do. Um, and uh, so I I read this play for the first time a y two years ago, I think, and um, I it didn't it didn't strike me very much uh, when I finished it. I couldn't see why it was such a classic, um, and I don't know why that is. Um, I read it I read it all in one day then. I read it all in one day this time too, uh, but but I don't know. I I must have read it too fast or not been prepared or I I don't know. But but that certainly wasn't the case this time. Um, however, this time, I've been so blown away by this play. I've spent the past week or so, like, obsessing over this play and thinking about it all the time, trying to think about what I'm going to say in this video. And each time I listen to what someone has to say about Hamlet or read something someone's written about Hamlet or watch a new adaptation of Hamlet, I've now watched two and I've also, as I said, read it twice, um... Each time I become more and more uncertain about what I can say about this play, um, because almost anything I can say about it almost feels too reductive, uh, because every single, every single production I've seen so far has interpreted it a little bit differently, and each person who interprets it has interpreted it a little bit differently. And so, seeing all these different interpretations, I, I kind of kept thinking, who am I to offer my own interpretation, because any interpretation of mine might end up being wrong. And what also occurred to me is that that indecisiveness is kind of similar to the indecisiveness that Hamlet shows throughout the play. But that being said, on a weirdly personal note, I actually found myself relating to Hamlet a lot throughout the play. Um, which feels very uncomfortable, because he's clearly not a very nice person. Um... No, he's charming, and he's witty, and he's kind of funny, but he also commits three murders without a hint of remorse. He mistreats the women in his life, and perhaps unintentionally, but still, he brings about the downfall of, of Denmark, um, and the takeover of Norway. And, but I think there's something very human about Hamlet's indecis indecisiveness. Um, I think it's easy for thoughtful people to become uh, confused uh, because they see issues from a lot of different perspectives and can see the virtues and the uh, the drawbacks of a lot of every of every of a lot of many different viewpoints and many different decisions and so it makes it hard for them always to know what they think um, and uh, you know that being said Hamlet is a very confused character. Um, you know, in one scene, he's telling Ophelia, get thee to a nunnery. In the next, in another scene, he's making weird sexual puns at her. Um, you know, in one scene, he won't kill Claudius, uh, because he's afraid Claudius will go to heaven because he's just been praying. And in a lot of other scenes, he, a lot of his, uh, what he says kind of 
reeks of nihilism. So you wonder how, why, why does this person who seems possibly to be a nihilist all of a sudden fear that his uncle will go to heaven if he kills him? Um, so Hamlet is a very confused character, and I guess, uh... I related to that, maybe. Uh, confusion about everything and not being able to make decisions always because of seeing things from many different perspectives. And I'm veering in toward being very self-aggrandizing, and I apologize. Um, but that was just a thought I had. One observation that I have about Hamlet and uh, on the subject of his indecisiveness is that I, I think there are two moments in the play where he does show decisiveness um, and drive. Um, and one is in the scene where he first meets Hamlet Sr., the, the ghost of Hamlet Sr. Um, you know, his friends are trying to hold him back, and he says, I don't hold my, uh, you know, I don't care about my own life, just let me go. If he kills me, it doesn't matter. Um, just let me go see this ghost. Um, and he's so determined to get to the ghost to talk to him because he thinks the ghost will have some great revelation, and, uh, and... Then there's the final scene where Hamlet is dying, where he finally just decides to kill Claudius. And it seems notable to me that the two points where... That the one... Of the two points where he shows decisiveness, one is when he knows he's dying and presumably has resigned himself to it, and the other one is where he hopes that some supernatural being will give his life some meaning, presumably. Um, so I thought that that's just an observation. I, I, again, I'm not sure what to make of it. Um, uh, I'm not sure what to make of a lot of my observations about this play. Um, but, uh, I, I, that occurred to me this week, so I thought I would mention it. And then, finally, just kind of a note on Hamlet as a piece of entertainment. I think, uh, it's such a astonishing progression of escalation after escalation, um... And you just get the sense after every single thing, um, you know, from Hamlet's feigned madness to his killing of Polonius to Ophelia's madness to Ophelia's suicide, just greater and greater dread at how this is going to end. And I, I got that sense even though I knew how it was going to end. And I must say, I'm, I'm jealous of all the audiences from Shakespeare's England who got to see this for the first time without knowing how it ends, because that must have been quite an experience. Um... To just ex to just see this play and not have any clue how it was going to end. Um, and that being said, and along with that, the ending, I think, is sad. It, it's the ending of Hamlet is sad in a different way from the ending of Romeo and Juliet, for example. Um, at the end of Romeo and Juliet, I think we're sad because of this awful thing that's befallen these characters, these mostly innocent characters. Uh, in Hamlet, I don't think we feel as bad for the characters who are still alive by the end, um, by the, by the last scene, that is, um, but I think we feel sad because of just the emptiness of everything that's happened, um, just how nothing's been accomplished by all of this, and the emptiness also of Hamlet's dying moments when he asks Horatio to live on and tell his story so that he'll be remembered and, uh, uh, gives Fortinbras his blessing as ruler of Denmark. It, it all rang hollow by that point because, um, you know, in the scene just prior, Hamlet talked about how we're all going to die, so no one's going to be remembered, so what's the point of trying to be remembered? And yet here we see him asking Horatio to go forth and tell his story to the world so he'll be remembered. And also, on that note, why should he care what happens to Denmark after he dies if nothing matters, uh, after you die? So, it just, that for me was what left me feeling de sad at the end of this play, uh, in a different way from my, that, from how I felt sad at the end of Romeo and Juliet. Um, so I think this is an incredible piece of entertainment, and it's no wonder that it is Shakespeare's most popular play. Um, and yeah, I, uh, I'm gonna watch hopefully another production this weekend. Uh, I need to find one. But, um, so yeah, uh, I guess, uh, that is what I have to say, uh, although that's not everything I have to say. I feel like I'll be thinking about and coming up with new things to say about this play for a long time to come, um, because it's such a weird play, a weird and complicated play. Um, so, anyway, um, thank you all for watching. Uh, next week we are doing Othello, 
which uh, will be interesting. So, thank you for watching, guys. Bye.